Alrighty then, it is up stuff here with practice cast number one. No idea how I'm gonna start these off, but I guess we'll just go and pretend we had a champion select and address the teams. So, on blue side, we have Meta Warrior on the Mordekaiser in the top lane, a drop bear in Vi in the jungle. Me, Upstart on Lux in the middle lane, Juicy Boy on Vayne as the Eddie Carry, Hate is Fame as Morgana on support. And then you have go and look on the red side. You have Mr. Elfs as Trindamir in the top lane, Animal Instincts in that jungle on the J4, Callum Wells as LeBlanc in the mid lane, Speed Doggy as Jin in the bottom lane, and Larry Well. Larry Well or Larry Wells, I don't know if I've cut it off, I doubt it. So Larry Well as that Nami in the support role. And immediately the thing that strikes out to me here is look at the pick potential as well as just a split push style coming out here from this red team. They have Little Blanc, they have the Jarvan, two strong picks. When you go in and combine that with the bubble coming out from the Nami, with the Sneer coming out from Jin, very strong pick potential and then you just go and have the trainer on the top lane to really go and drive it in however in contrast on the blue team you've got that Lux and that Morgana combination quite a bit of strong range CC potentially pulling it into burst which when you then proceed to go and add in the Vi disruption Vayne dealing damage and then Mordecai if he does get himself involved in that team fight being able to put on a lot of damage as long as he is not as long as he really isn't kited a bit too much, which is, I think, potentially somewhere where Red Side could struggle. We'll just have to see how these team fights go in the end. So, handing it over to Directed Cam. So, just for the early item buyers, nothing really too untoward. We can look at the runes here. Morgana going, putting some points in that inspiration tree, making sure she has that stopwatch. Because Sonya's very strong item on that champion. Welcome to Summoner's it's looking like a fairly standard start so far. If LeBlanc and Jin do show up, just a defensive start here from the blue side with four of them coming down to make sure that um, there's no invade coming out. With the strength of that bubble, with the potential Jin snare coming through, as there is quite a lot of level 1 power, not as much as level 2 power as we don't see the Jarvan being able to have access to his full combo, but the armor reduction coming out from his Q if he does take that first is nice, as well as just the increased attack speed from the flag if he does take that route. But extraordinarily safe starts here coming out from both sides as we just kind of look here at the blue side jungle for a bit, nothing really going on, no wards being placed either at this stage, which is rather interesting. One difference really is that Mr. Elves here did go and make sure that the red buff wasn't being taken, making sure there wasn't an invade coming in on that side. So just really thinking ahead there, not just going straight to lane as you would expect from people in the solo game. There's lane start, everything going on quite easily. No problem there for the side to drop there on that lane. Doesn't look like there's any problems there for Jarvan. A bit slower on the clear though, which Vi will have that advantage earlier on. Being able to get that exact speed buff from Jarvan. Pretty one sided trade there for the side of Upstart in the middle lane, however. Just having that power, not even having the combo, there's no need to get a big burst of damage. Just if, as long as you can land that auto attack on the Lux, quite easy. We will just see this lane sort of fall apart though for Upstarters when he gets to that stage with a long against the kill pressure going on. Lux is one of those champions that has trouble clearing the way to go through two of those E's to be able to clear the back lane. Or just being needing to go and auto attack those casting minions in the anyway. And as a result, we just go and play around the side. But he's quite vulnerable. Whether to fall, fall in coming in the bottom lane. Quite a bit of damage with the heal being burned. And that's just the power of the Nami bubble. The CC coming out of that gym, coming out of that Nami, being able to punish the lower range of the vein. So it is going to be on Juicy Boy and on Hades Bane to try and narrow it down a bit more. They've lost quite a fair bit of their sustain and they've already lost that heal as well. But with an engage coming in, in the middle lane, Upstart does roam over. 
and it is very nearly a kill, but the Raptors send it over. First blood there for upstart, slower on the turnaround, but just the early burst of damage coming out from drop fear. Onto animal instincts being just enough to see them. Taking the earlier, but there is a fight going on the bottom lane, and Juicy Boy goes down. Just a bit too much damage with those auto attack powers coming out from the army. And this lane is so, so trying to into as another kill occurs. None of the CC even needs to land there. Haters Bane playing far too aggressively. That's when you just want to back out. Land, try and land a binding by all means, but don't go too hard at that. And Lux putting in quite a bit of damage on the Kalinos here in that middle lane. Everything's settled out a bit, and the gold so far is just dead even. We're seeing quite heavy CS leads for the jungle and for the mid lane right now. Top lane being even. Juicy Boy on that lane being slightly behind. But nothing so far unapproachable as the gold is even. And with the CS leads coming out from mid and jungle being enough to actually prevent the CS, a gold lead going over to red stage. So I would actually like to see Blue Team try and stabilize here, try and keep the gold even, prevent the snowball from the Trinity, prevent the snowball from the Blanc, because when you, they get the ability to group, they have so much CC they can throw out, they have enough engage, enough height in this competition. If they can stay even, they're going to do so much damage to the Jin, so much damage to the Nami, and it's going to put the pressure on Animal Instinct, who so far has had a rough time. He down quite a bit in CS, he gave away that first blood. You put the pressure on him to get the solid engaged, to let him know the potential to get him to the back line. As there's a bit of trade going on the top lane, but this is going to be quite important as the flash is burned by Mr. Else. But the summon Eerie coming through for Meta Warrior there on the top lane. I have no idea what to do because I am not a play by play. But just this bot lane, you can see it. Juicy boy in his face. But the moment Dash gets put down, needs to back away because the snare comes through from Jin and it ends up resolving in a kill. Zombie is here though. Too little too late, however, as the double kill does go over the speed of Doggy. And at this stage, they're just playing this lane so well. They know exactly what they need to do. Burning the black shield with that early bubble, then using the Q to trigger off that Jin W near just to punish the squishy and the relatively immobile weak bottom lane from the side of blue side at this current time. And as a result they're getting quite a bit of power pressure and they finally come to eat out quite a bit of get the food self with speed dog currently ahead of our 15 over the side of juicy boy today. But you continue to go with your and the rest of the lanes here the top side is what's pulling us through for the new side right now. You have Lux, quite a heavy CS lead over the long. Five, not as much as it was before, but still managing to get quite a bit of CS as over that J4. But with the roam coming through, nothing really comes of it as that binding is missed. Just using, trying to utilize that pressure that long is really giving away at this stage with the inability to win quite a bit but so much damage coming out from Larry Well at this stage just with the Q and bubble and that is through the black shield as well. It's quite a level advantage at this stage actually for that one and as we do see level 5 for both Steve Doggy and Larry Well where it's a level 4 for Juicy Boy and only just hitting level 4 for him. But if we go and look at the top side a bit more, Meta Warrior managing to get a solid CS lead going on when they both hit 6, getting that XP advantage as well, which is quite important for the more being able to sort of get the base damage a bit more, just to coast him through until he can get that hex tech gunplay, get that healing, get that damage coming through. But as all this is happening, look at the turret pressure. At this stage, we do need to see drop the potential on the visit here. As he is still come down from the middle lane. Great break from the gang. He's charging up. He does hit Speed Doggy. And Speed Doggy goes down all of a sudden. But he still has an ultimate left to try and get Larry well. And the bind he lands. Double kill for Drop Bear. And it's a solid gank. And it was sorely needed in this bottom lane. Now they won't struggle as much with that little influx of gold. That little relief pressure. Confidence is going to be up. CS is going to get a little bit higher as well. 
but Upstart continuing to increase the CS lead here, currently 60 to 30 in that middle lane. The match just showing how little damage is being done by Animal Instincts as he just gets caught out rather simply there by the side of Drop Bear and Upstart. Just a quick binding to really make sure that he isn't able to do that. Moving that into the E, and they're turning this into a blue buff steal, potentially a dragon on the back end. As we see the three men engage, and they have the they have the man above the man. And with the early damage from Drop Bear with the uh, Lux ultimate coming through, they managed to pick up the kill. And not quite managed to pick up the other one. And the shield just coming through to the side of Juicy Boy to prevent that tower shot from killing him off. A drop bear going in. So much damage here, but Animal Instincts can land, but he misses the drop out. It might not even matter though, because there's just too much damage. Metal Warrior, however, getting another kill on that top lane. And the blue side just overstaying horrendously there, getting greedy, being baited in by Larry Well with the respawns coming through. Animal Instincts manages, although despite missing his combo, manages to zone Drop Bear away from escaping for long enough for the auto attacks to come through. While we just see, Dr um, while we just see Hater's Fame get picked off by the LeBlanc first here. And that's with only an amplifying term at this stage. Despite the low health, that is what LeBlanc wants to be doing. Jumping over those walls, surprising the support, surprising the squishy carry that they have. You have a Fame, you have a lot of have a Morgana, but LeBlanc can be very potent just getting around them. If they don't land their shields in time in the form of the shield, in the form of the Lux, they're not going to be able to do stage. But credit the blue team, however, they've managed to stabilize that bottom lane pressure quite well. Despite the fact that the turret almost is almost down, they managed to play it so that it was actually the top lane, the Metal Warrior who got that top lane tower, getting that first tower goal, and as a result they've knocked up to a 2k gold lead in this current situation. They're finding this, and they may need to be careful here, though. The Black Shield prevents any more follow-up, but the Jin ult comes out, and Juicy Boy might be able to escape with Metal Warrior, I think. No, he walked down, the tower was already down. But they're going to potentially try and go in here. Tidal Wave being going out with a pick off the Bane. And that is enough. Juicy Boy again being slightly guilty of overextending. Stayed a bit longer than he should. And the red side wall lane is just serving this up. But the kill coming through from Metal Warrior with the ultimate on the back end. Will he be able to get the speed dodge from the flash coming through? Burning the heal as well from the side of speed. Metal Warrior is playing this game so far, however, all of time spent bot lane is allowing Trindamir to catch up with the farm lane. And with Trindamir already on that static ship, when he starts to get more of these items up, again, it's going to be extraordinarily painful for the rather squishy back end of Lucy. The Lux, the Vayne probably is capable of dealing with him in some minor way, but unless you land that Morgana binding, unless you land that Lux binding, you manage to keep up the kite. It's going to be extraordinarily difficult for this backline to be able to survive the effects of the Trindamir getting in. But if we look again at the mid lane as we just saw, Upstart still doing brilliantly in the CS department. 40 CS up on Calumwell, applying a lot of lane pressure, managing to get a bit of roaming getting done as well. And although technically it's me blowing my own trumpet, when you look at the numbers it is going quite well. Kellen Wells, however, managing to deal quite well. He got himself that kill off the back end, punishing the mistakes from blue side so far, especially of that bot lane. As we do see a lane swap coming through from the side of blue side, moving that Vayne and Morgana to the top side just to try and defend that pop lane tower a bit better. Potentially going into this Trindamir, shutting him down a bit more, but Trindamir is level 9, so there is potential if Juicy Boy, if Hades Fame gets left behind for a little bit, that this does go horribly wrong. We do see Larry Wells paying a little bit of attention to this spot side, trying to potentially start something here, but just not managing to land the skill shots and actually having a little bit of pressure put back down on him. Helen Wells is not really able to provide as much pressure in this lane as something like while well, Metal Warrior taking advantage of the fact that Speed Doggy is behind. But the Jin Ultimate is coming out, the tension is going to be an issue. But we 
We do see Drop Bear coming down this top lane, and they don't know he's here. With the ultimate coming through, he misses the Q, however. The ultimate does come through. Does he have enough damage? That speed dog is dead, and they're all rubbing into the middle lane. Is there enough? The ultimate misses. But that should be enough. Hope you can chunk him out, but that's the thing coming through. There's no backup from the Paladin. Well, but they get Juicy Boy anyway, just enough disruption to enable the LeBlanc to land those abilities. Despite that, Hater's fame and upstart still very high health, and unless Mr. Elves is able to do something about it, well, we see Animal Instincts here going for the low health kill on Hater's fame. But upstart, if he lands another one with Job Bear using the flash, they potentially not need it. But still securing that kill, punishing Animal Instincts for free. Upstart and drop there, still on eye health. Hater's fame potentially has something to worry about though, with Callum Wells coming back. So Eating Doggy is still there in that lane. If a bit of damage lands. But now they're backing away now, they're both trying to push this in with the Nami ultimate coming out. Don't quite know what's going down there, but as a directed cam has moved to the top lane. But from the looks of it, just based off the mini map, Meta Warrior not quite getting that kill in the top lane. The drop potentially going to happen. The kill coming through on the damage over time from Mordekaiser. Meta Warrior is playing this so well that the Andrews book is providing that damage amplification, particularly effective on the damage over time as it keeps the combat. Guaranteed to get the five stacks, which means by the end of it, you end up seeing that damage over time doing 10% of the damage. Got no magic damage as Upstart falls down for his first death of the game. Just the amount of pressure coming out, you've got to dodge the Nami, you've got to dodge the Jin, and then you've got LeBlanc jumping and putting down a lot of burst on top of that. It's just so difficult for this team to really do anything, particularly the things really coming through. Despite being in the two towers at that current stage, and this does have to pay a lot about what's going to happen in the mid lane. In the middle, in the mid game here. We're, we're really in the mid game now as we trickle through the mid game. Meta Warrior though, he's like uh, over the center of that ward. We see Animal Instinct from the We see Speed Doggy and Mary Wells from the top lane. And we're not quite seeing this right now. But what will he do? Die is probably the answer. And he's putting in a good effort so far. Just not quite managing the big health return. But at the end, he just doesn't manage to get enough damage out. Well juggled there by the side of Red Team. But Callum Wells is doing a bit more in that middle lane, just putting the first throwing out a few abilities on the haters' face. Upstart though, arriving there, dissuading them from really trying to push that, move that push further than it should have gone. Just disrupting a few backs here on the top side, but while all this is happening, Juicy Boy should be able to pick up this bottom lane, but he takes a lot of tower shots to get it. Eventually, it does drop though. So Blue Team so far managing to play the map to a relatively accessible level, putting pressure on on multiple lanes, trying to go for the push, despite having a warrior getting thrown out there quite heavily. So we go and we look at the items. We see the Mordekaiser prioritizing that Meandries over the Hextech Dark Lane. I think they can do more damage and extended team fights at this current stage, but it but when it comes to overall extended laning phase, you're not gonna have that slowdown if you wanna try and go for a kill from the Hextech Gunblade active. And when you're casting a lot of abilities, you're really relying on that W life sap to provide you with that sustain. Otherwise, you're going to be losing health as you use those abilities to get away. But at this current stage, that so far ahead, he doesn't really need to worry about it all that much. He's in the fat of item and a half ahead. Whole half item ahead of the house in this stage, but it is. It doesn't really matter what he uses to blend up. There's a drop there going in the mid lane. Does he have enough damage to finish this off? With the little splash there just to get a move in range for the final auto attack. But Mr. Elves going in the top lane. The Undying is going to do quite a bit here. There isn't enough slows on the side of Meta Warrior. And the final crit to get the kill. The damage over time isn't going to quite be enough for the side of Meta Warrior. But that's what you want to see from the side of Red's side. You trim the mirror. Finally starts picking up those kills. He starts getting the upper hand. Juicy Boy is all of a sudden just dead. This is going to be where the kiting comes from. The side though is Cater's Fame and Upstart try and get back. 
to start throwing out those bindings. Animal Instincts is caught, and the E comes out to Larry Wells. And Lawson, but here's Drop Bear on the back end. Do they have enough damage? With the ultimate managing the head across both of them, but the sneer coming out from Kellen Wells is going to be able to hit and drop here exclusively. But he still has the charge up. Where does he go in? He'll choose just to wait a little bit. The binding does catch Doggy. And just a real back and forth trade here from the side of both teams. We see the engage, good for Metal Instincts. The focus on to Juicy. Not quite having the position he wants. Getting caught out quite heavily by Jin, by Nami. Within that Java. On the tight back, on the top of the is good. Managing to just sway the rest of the major the red team. Really chasing up all of the Lowry Dolphin to get behind him. Another kill on Animal Instincts. And there was really only Callum Well, great sneer that prevented an advantage going over the blue side of the long run. And you can see red side pressuring. That was powered quite heavily, and as a result, picking up that tower. And this seems to be where the top players enjoy hanging out, but Animal Instinct is going to miss it again. Is he able to pick up the kill from that end? As you see, engaged up, taking advantage of that. All three. As Droppy manages to pick up the kill, but LeBlanc on Callum Wells manages to just destroy Juicy Boy. And it is far too much for him to cope with it right now. And this. Callum Wells has just been playing this mid game so well. He landed his first attack. And he's just going to be able to keep on picking up his kills. Whoa, with that ultimate landing on him, he might be able to dissuade him a little bit from what he's trying to do. On the they pick up Nami. They pick up Nami on that back end. Binding landing. The rest of the damage coming through. And Callum Wells, with that low health bar, just not managing to be enough of dissuasion. From anyone doing anything but the switch back just to land that final bit of burst is just enough with Jin channeling the ultimate preventing the carry through from upstart to really punish that move. The mid game from Callum Wells honestly at this stage is phenomenal. Upstart though might not be safe. Callum Wells misses the abilities he manages to pick up Callum Wells though on the back end upstart but Speed Doggy manages to finish him off. And this is the game Red Side wants, with their Trindamir eventually going to be able to scale up with the LeBlanc, with the pick that just comes out of this competition. They want this chaos game, they don't want to end up choking up, end up grouping. And as a result, you are seeing both these teams become quite close to one another. The early advantage not by being outdone by the side of but drop beer quick hands on the side of the ultimate does come through does he have enough damage to finish it off with the heal the Q comes through landed solidly and yeah. with another follow-up coming out from Larry Wells to try and just prevent and save his own life but Meta Warrior is just living underneath this tower here right now and that's a very quick kill and Animal Instincts might not be able to survive this current stage. One more auto attack. Cataclysm will prevent it, but Callum Wells picks up the kill on Meta Warrior on the back end. Drop there, will he be able to finish off Meta Wells? The redemption comes through, that might have been a wasted cooldown as we do see Bane and Drop there combined just to provide enough damage to get through all the healing. Upstart and Haters Fame prepping this lane. They should be able to pick off the mid tower out of this. 4v3, 4v2, sorry, across the entire map. Speed Doggy won't be able to defend this, but getting caught by that blinding on the back end. Good that the cooldowns were in there. Upstart was just out of range to really follow up with that with some damage. The ultimate was up. And despite Jin having a solid level advantage, he's only equal with the mid laner, so there is potential for quite a bit of blood here. But Drop Dog misses the Q again, but manages to get the three down the lock up. Mike does start finding this, they're going to pick up Speed Doggy. But Callum Wells taking a little dab into the enemy team, seeing what's around. And this round at the stage, Blue Team, how are they going to end up getting out? Mr. Instincts is in the... Animal Instincts is in the mid lane. LeBlanc has retreated over to the back 
of the lane, but if they decide to go in all at once, we could quite easily see a series of kills coming in from the red side. But they have backed out. They're not going to go for that multiple pronged approach as we do see blue side on the back end of it. going to try and push them like drop there. Goes in aggressive. Misses the Q, but just ends up getting slowed on the back end. And they're trying to go for this middle tower. But all five members are up. Callum Wells is behind them. Will they have enough? And their ADC is nowhere near inside. This is going to be potential. They're going to have flanks coming in for a back end. Now we are beautifully angled. Callum Wells is up in his face. And it is devastation for the side of the red side. They managed to get their damage in from all aspects of it. And Juicy Boy isn't going to be able to beat LJ4 on the back end. The warrior, the components of the Black Cleaver have been enough damage to get through it. And it is an ace for the red side across the map. Just the four is ready to play. Playing the game how they need to play it with their comp. They have the Trindamere flanking. They have the LeBlanc flanking. A brilliant Nami ultimate from Larry Well to set up that initial fight. You see them, as a result of this, they're going to be the ones in this hotel. They've got the current pressure. They're going to be able to walk it up. Haters fame is up, but they're going to be able to get them potentially push further if they want to. But they do need to try and back out of this stage because you still have the long range pick coming out from Lux, coming out from Morgana. Coming out from drop there with the ultimate to lean up. And Speed Doggy potentially gonna fall for this. And it's just a smooth chain of CC. No opportunity to flash on the back end of that. But this is the huge move you want to see the side go for probably the barrier at this stage. The enemy AD carriers down here 24 minutes in with the Bane you have a strong. But they're starting to play towards bottom side with that infernal trait coming up. A safer option, but considering the lack of vision and the lack of play around that top side front red team, the fact that they're already there to contest, I'd take Infernal over Baron at this stage any day. But they're gonna go for the contest for the Infernal Drake here. Potentially trouble coming out here as that Lizzix does go in. Another beautiful army on the from Larry Wells. Blue team's getting assaulted again though. Lux ultimate misses. They do pick up Animalistic on the back end, but it isn't going to be enough as we do see Callum Wells act as cleanup. And there was just no pressure on the real damage dealers there. There was no pressure on Callum Wells. There was no pressure onto Mr. Elf's in that game. All the damage went on Animalistic trying to stop it. And in the end, you had all of these squishy champions being caught in the pit. And this is really what is causing the team right now. The Black Heel and Black Tank. While Rai is making use of the damage, it just isn't quite being enough. And Meta Warrior is just not getting enough done in this split push. He's been stuck underneath us in a tower for a very long time now. And he's just not backing away when the rest of his team has no pressure. And as a result of this, we're likely going to see Red Side pick up the Baron. Clearing out the vision, going to pick up that Rift Scuttler on the back end. They're waiting for Animal Instincts to move over here. Certainly going to be interesting. They're potentially going to get the flank in on. They've got Larry Wells behind Haters Fame and Juicy Boy. There is not going to be much they can do with Callum Wells. He misses the ability, but the damage is still there. The rest of the team has arrived though. What will they be able to do? Animal Instincts managing to get the knockup over the through the There's just not enough damage here. Juicy Boy's been back away quite surely. <coughs> oh my. I can only play my. And that's the entire team down. They just get caught up and they're playing these continuous chaotic team fights that they want. Blue team isn't getting the ability to land the CC, and as a result, they should be able to pick up Baron. Potentially be able to pick up a series of cows and break the base off of this final push if they want to. More likely that we want to see them take the Baron and then back away from the safety. And they're going to be able to take this Baron without much of not going to see much, especially with the redemption coming through. No real opportunity for Juicy Boy to clean up, but he's gone anyway. What is he going to do? He goes in, he dies, he lands one on the second of the hill. He really should have done it. Now he's going to be dead. All the five push to run aside. And they're just going in one by one. It hates his face. This isn't going to do much. I'm sure we do see Baron pick up and on the back end. They might not have to see Baron though. But the heal coming out, being burned, just to make sure that they have enough damage to get that fourth gen attack, get that burst. Just to take the next one. But upstart, 
Bart with the snipe. Is there a board in that bush? Yes, there is. Just not managing to back away soon enough. The damage dealers coming out from the side. Upstart and Drop Bear continuing their strong early game form. Just not quite managing to do enough to make in these chaotic team fights, getting picked off a bit too easily by the side of Red Team. From here, you want to start to see a 1 3 1 coming out LeBlanc to one side, Chindemir to the other. And you have LeBlanc, honestly, can kill anybody on the map at this stage. The only one she might not be able to get through is Meta Warrior, and that's because he's got a little bit of health. But the Lux, the Bane, even by at this stage, more than, more than enough to be able to get through to them quite and burst them down. And then Chindemir. Blade of the Rune King, Phantom Dance of Static Ship. That is what you want on that champion. All you really need is an IE, and that's about as powerful as you are potentially going to get. But we can see the um, Null Magic Mantle come through, I believe it is. It's the smaller one. The Null Magic Mantle one could be the larger one. Don't quite know my item names. Potentially going to be made into Mercury. Into that um, hex just to provide a little bit of safety from the border Kaiser damage. Or he's just border from the early lane. You see all that's going on in the top lane. That is so much damage that it just isn't enough here. And that is with that paper, with that sense here that definitely you're not going to be able to do that. His heal back the pit first just isn't enough for Meta Warrior. Because he allows this elves enough to put their own first. As a result, we've got the scene speed dodge 2v1 the bot lane here of blue side. But we see upstart on the back end getting caught out by the Nami, getting caught out by the LeBron, and it's just not gonna be enough. The snare land this is gonna be like out for upstart on the Lux. And from this they have Baron. It is more than likely they can finish this off, because it is only really juicy boy alive at this stage with a minion threat from the mid wave. They should be able to break the base quite easily, although they might not want to go for the game end. Although they do have the 4v3 and 5v3 actually at this stage with J4 being back up. Three members, they come back, Juicy Boy goes all in, and that's going to be him gone! Camerwell's coming for you. Scorpion does come out, manages to get a kill on Camerwell, but another beautiful ultimate coming out. Can Speed Doggy arrive? He doesn't need to, Mr. Elves arrives at the leg and just enough to pick up that kill and from here they can easily finish the game, it is 3 minutes. Can hate his fame and upstart mention the stop. Hate his fame is going to go down very quickly though, but stop what being burnt to delay his death for a little while longer. As we do see upstart decline to flash away, but he's caught in the cataclysm. Will there be enough damage on the back end here to really be able to resolve it anyway? Dog, which is really channeling in the minions as Upstart does pick up Animal Instinct. Animal Instinct going a little bit too heavy in that engage. And they're just trying to get the more minions down here. Upstart burning that ultimate to try and see them away to try and save that tower. But it isn't enough. Juicy Boy is back up and he just runs straight into the enemy team. Upstart is slow to this, could easily be him going down. Mr. Elf doing so much damage with his items so far. Just enough threat, just enough sustain as well to make any response damage meaningless at this stage. Now it's down to drop bit and has been at any stage able to have the time to back alive again since about 28 minutes long, and that is likely going to be the case. Meta Warrior is just hanging out in the fountain. Although he is back now, that is the banner of the Maran minion as it is right now. What can they do against the Gone down, but just too much damage. Meta Warrior ends up going down. And I still have no idea how to play my play, but honestly, that mid game with the chaos team fights, that is how Red Team won. They managed to dissuade the early game advantage. 2k gold stretching up to about 3k gold towards the later stages. Then we just saw flanks coming through. We saw disjointed fights, those areas where the LeBlanc and the Trindamere really shine when you're not able to kite them back through that period of undeath, when you're not able to provide that support enough to dissuade Callum Wells from doing it, and when even when you did see Blue Team try to get 
aggressive in those team fights. It was beautiful disengage from the side of Cameron Wells, from the side of Larry. Well, and that is how you want to play the game with a, with this really sort of scrappy composition we do see coming out from blue side, red side. Sorry. So good game to them.